I set out to create a simple app, an app that automatically generates captions on live streams. And this should have been really easy because the last few months I've been building a similar app on the iPhone for short form content. And the rules were simple. I use the existing code from my app. I launch by the end of the month and I make the captions dynamic and fun to read. But on the first day of coding, I already started to break my own rules. And the idea of releasing this by the end of the month was now in question. The problems were just piling up. But just as I was about to give up, I found a solution that changed everything. My name is Adam Lytle. I recently became debt-free building and distributing consumer apps on the App Store. Now I document my journey showing what works and what doesn't work. If you wanna do live streaming, there's really only a few software packages available that let you do it. There's the open source OBS or Streamlabs. And it turns out creating plugins directly for these products is a little bit trickier than I had anticipated. When I ask ChatGPT for some help, it spits out C code. And that just broke my first rule, reusing my existing code. So I had to find a different way. One possible solution is to have the rendered subtitle frame saved to a file on the disk, load that into OBS, and then hope that it automatically updates every time there's a change. So I got started. I had set out to build the first prototype, just pulling the existing code from my iPhone app into the Mac OS app, modify and update it so that it automatically works and it can detect words and show the text on screen. But OBS doesn't render 10 frames per second when it's looking at changes to a file. In fact, I come across all these read write issues. So I tried a green screen. I tried capturing the window instead of saving it to the disk. But then you have these issues where if there's any semi-transparency, any opacity, that shows up as green with a white or a black tinge to it. It ignores the alpha channel. And then the problems started to stack up. My M3 MacBook was crying for help. It was running at 80 to 90% just to hear the words that were spoken, render it onto the frame at 10 frames per second. And this was clunky. This didn't look good. This needed improvement. Maybe this whole idea was a mistake. Sometimes you just, you gotta take a step back. You gotta pull yourself away from the project, pull yourself away from the code. And I had a few days over the weekend to really reconsider what this project was about, whether I should even pursue this project and whether it was even gonna be feasible. And I could start to see why a lot of these automatic captions apps for live subtitles were so static, so boring and so plain. So at the moment, I'm going for this effect where I'm trying to animate each word individually, like what you'd see on TikTok videos where you've got a pre, you've already know what's gonna be set. So you've got the block of text on the screen showing you what's coming up, what's gonna be said. With live captions, you don't have that ability. You don't have the ability to, to know what word comes next. All you know is the word that's being spoken now. If you highlight that and that pops out, words are popping up on the screen all over the place and it's distracting. And then the solution came from one of the most unexpected places. During my live stream building this thing, someone in the chat recommended just popping up a speech bubble. This is elegant. This could work. This is doable. So that's when I realized that rendering the captions frame by frame just wasn't the solution. It wasn't going to work because it had too much CPU overhead and too much latency between the spoken word and rendering that frame on the screen. The obvious solution was just a default to Swift UI transitions and Swift UI styling to display it on a window that's captured in OBS. It started to look like there was no way around breaking my rule of recycling my old code. Five hours of coding later and I've got a really nice dynamic feel to it that renders faster and works a lot better. The CPU is no longer burning down. The frames are rendering at like a full 30, 60 frames per second. It's beautiful, it works so nicely. And this is when I sort of realized that the sometimes the best solution isn't necessarily to reuse the existing code. Sometimes the best solution is just to re 
build it from scratch, which goes against every ounce of my being because that seems like that's the longest part of the journey, longest process to do. But if I was to go down the original path of rendering each frame individually, writing it to disk and then importing it into OBS, there were too many challenges and it might not have worked as well as I thought if I got there in the end. Or if I did get it to work, there would be a lot of time optimizing that code to run it at a full 30 frames per second without burning my MacBook. Sometimes breaking rules does lead to innovation. The rule that I set was to create a quick project that I used my existing code, imported it into a different use case and call it a day. That wasn't the case and I end up having to rebuild a lot of the code and that sucks. The other thing that I've been learning is this live streaming and building while I have people contributing their ideas and their feedback is a form of validation and it is a form of getting that feedback loop, closing that feedback loop even closer in. So previously I would release the app, wait for the feedback, reiterate, release the app, wait for the feedback, reiterate. And this process has allowed me to build in real time what I'm building, get feedback in real time that some of it could be noise, some of it could be suggestions that I probably would never consider or a different direction or just different ways of coding things. And they're all fine, that, that's all part of the journey. But sometimes you get that feedback and that, that feedback loop closes in where an idea is contributed by someone or some feedback is contributed that you wouldn't have got unless you released the product, tested it, got the feedback, and then reiterated. So that suggestion about the speech bubble absolutely changed the trajectory of this app, absolutely changed the process. I hadn't got too far down the development process to make those quick changes and to shift on the spot. I lost about a day of code, but that's not too bad when you consider I could have released a whole product, it could have flopped, never have got that feedback and just written that app off altogether. Or worse yet, got that feedback too late in the game and then wasted weeks of development time and being so stuck on the existing code and so stuck on that core functionality that are built or so many extra components of the functionality that are now built on top of it, that changing that one little thing would have been too hard in a couple of weeks. And the other thing that I'm learning is don't be afraid to start over. I had some hesitancy and some resistance to just scrapping what I'd built and just do it all over again. And the best outcome in this situation was just to do that. In terms of an update with this channel, I'm dropping back down to doing one of these releases per week, one of these main videos per week. As you know, there's been a few issues with the family, some 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 personal things that have pulled me away from the content creation side of things. I'd usually dedicate Wednesday and Friday to documenting my journey and releasing a YouTube video. It takes a whole day. I record until like lunchtime and then I edit the video afterwards. A whole day of creating one video and I'd spend Wednesday and Friday doing that. So I'm dropping the Friday off of my routine at the moment. I just don't have the time to dedicate a whole day to content creation when my my where I'm needed in this moment is actually with family and actually continuing with the development of my app portfolio. But that sort of has to prioritize the content creation side of things. Don't get me wrong, this is an important part of my where I wanna go. I wanna keep helping people and keep, keep that momentum going. So now it's just a matter of doubling up on my time. So while I'm building, while I'm coding, I'm gonna be on the live stream. And if you do want help, if you do want some suggestions or some motivation, jump on there, have a chat. It's gonna be happening probably in your nighttime if you're in the US or overseas because I'm in Australia.